afternoon. Welcome to today's afternoon session on the internationalization of Greek higher education. My name is Stefanos Gandolfo. I'm going to be the chair for this panel, and I'm particularly delighted to, to be chairing a panel with such distinguished speakers and on a topic uh, I've studied in, in the US, in China, in the UK, a topic that um, I know personally quite, quite well. Um, the internationalization of Greek higher education has been an enduring topic that we've been hearing about for, for many, many years. Um, and yet, despite some very uh, notable examples, such as the Erasmus program and the Fulbright program, um, there have been minor steps in this direction. And it seems that in the past uh, three to four years, there have been some major changes uh, that we heard from Minister Kerameus uh, earlier today um, about the changes in the legal framework, the new investments that are being made in this direction, and also strategic partnerships that have been formed. And all of this creates a notable change in outlook, in practices, in aspirations, but also creates a lot of questions. Questions such as what are the main obstacles that we still have ahead of us in order to fully implement internationalization? How can universities respond to these challenges and what is their vision for the future? And more broadly, what is the EU's um, vision for internationalization and creating a common European education space? And also how do US universities Universities, the leading universities in the world fit into this picture. So to answer these questions, it is a true honor to have such a great um, panel with us. Um, we have Ms. Themis Christofidou, who is Director General for Education, Youth, Culture, and Sports um, at the European Commission. We have uh, Professor Andres Budovis, Rector of the National Technical University of Athens. Professor Dimitris Buradonis, who is Rector of the Athens University of Economics and Business. Ms. Artemis Zenetu, who is Executive Director for Bright Greece, and last and certainly not least, uh, Dr. Yanis Sasael, who is a researcher scientist at Google DeepMind in London. Um, now, what we've thought for this, uh, for this panel is to walk through um, the prospects and opportunities, the challenges, and also the solutions of how we can move forward. Uh, but before going to these specific themes, what I would like to ask for each one of our panelists is to give us a very short, and I'm going to be uh, quite strict with this, so two minutes. Mr. Rector, I'm looking at you. Um, and um, just a, a, an opening statement of where are we right now? What are the main achievements? What is the status quo and what are the key issues? Um, Mr. Director General, let's start with you. Hello and uh, thank you for, to the Delphi Forum for this opportunity and privilege to be amongst these distinguished panelists. Now, when, when I was 12 years old, I was fleeing war, and uh, uh, as we became refugees, uh, one of the things I remember vividly, apart from the, the bombs falling around us, was my mother telling my sister and me, we have lost everything. The only thing nobody can take from you is your education. Now, that's a 50-year-old uh, story, but unfortunately, it couldn't be more topical today uh, we woke up uh, a bit over a year ago with, uh, with an invasion on, on Ukraine and uh, once more Europe and the world remembered uh, what, what this means. Now, which was one of the first communities that mobilized when the war in Ukraine uh, started? It was academia. The number of academics from across uh, European universities that contacted us and were asking to uh, mobilize, to coordinate, to work together in order to, on one hand, make sure that all the uh, students, pupils, academics, teachers who fled Ukraine uh, found immediate shelter uh, in, the, in the EU member states in order to not to have even a, a day of interruption of their education. And on the other hand, how to help those that stayed in Ukraine continue to receive education uh, online or in whatever form uh, showed how much uh, importance uh, is attached to education, uh, it's, it's, about, uh, it's about the most, uh, the, the strongest, the most powerful tool of giving people uh, a chance for, for a better life. It's about fairness, it's about equity, it's, uh, it's about making our societies resilient, it's, uh, it's uh, also about uh, making our economies more competitive. So not losing a, a day of the, of the education of, of people is, uh, became immediately the first, the first concern. Now, the subject is internationalization of, of Greek higher education, and I would uh, um, say that the first steps of international, internationalization at, uh, at European level was 
a program that you all must know called Erasmus. This is where it all started for Europe uh, to, to start making its, uh, its education outward looking uh, to, to use mobility in order to um, make uh, its, uh, its education uh, more, more quality, more, uh, more outlooking. Uh, so that's where it all started. And I'll stop here so that we see what, what we have next. Thank you, and thank you for being on time. Um, Mr. Rector. Well, uh, I thank the uh, organizers for uh, having us in this uh, stellar uh, Delphi Forum, and I thank my uh, co-panelists for their participation. Uh, internationalization of uh, universities uh, reflects the, uh, position, uh, their position on the map uh, in terms of uh, uh, visibility and competitiveness. Uh, regarding uh, Greek universities, uh, internationalization is a vehicle for our uh, modernization and reform. Uh, it is uh, what uh, the interaction with foreign distinguished universities brings in uh, via um, uh, adoption of uh, good uh, practices, uh, for example, uh, uh, evaluation, accreditation, connection of uh, uh, research, uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, among other things. May I add uh, diversity and inclusion based on the previous uh, uh, panel. Uh, all these are new items in the Greek uh, uh, higher education system. Um, there is one advantage of late starters like us. We can uh, benefit from the experience of uh, successes and failures of the pioneers. And uh, uh, in many cases, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, as a matter of fact, the last two years, have seen remarkable uh, uh, efforts in the boosting of uh, internationalization of uh, Greek universities in the uh, legislation front and uh, in extroversion activities. Uh, Minister Karameos uh, was instrumental in this direction and the Greek universities have followed with uh, uh, a very positive way. Uh, having said that, I will mention very, very briefly, Mr. Chairman, four points which I consider um, uh, critical for my help our discussion. Uh, the most, to my opinion, the most advantageous domain of internationalization of Greek universities is Europe. Based on uh, tradition, uh, uh, duration, uh, uh, maturity, achievements, uh, capacity, and uh, prospects, and especially uh, the uh, strong ties of Greek universities with European universities in the area of uh, uh, scientific research. Uh, the latter is uh, uh, very interesting for my university, the National Technical University of Athens, which has a very strong record in that direction. Uh, truth be told that uh, Greek universities' internalization is at its infancy. Uh, the uh, uh, scale of the developments compared to other countries, Scandinavian, uh, France, Germany, Netherlands, uh, uh, Portugal, uh, Israel, uh, is uh, 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 in very limited uh, development. And uh, uh, I will uh, mention uh, a couple of things. Uh, the uh, percentage of foreign students registered at Greek universities, the number of incoming foreign students, mainly through the Erasmus program, in Greek universities, and uh, I should also mention the obstacle of the instruction language, which actually does not um, serve the cultural and educational purpose of uh, internationalization, which is to bring uh, foreign students and local students together. And, uh, Third point is the significant experience I would like to mention, which is gained uh, during the COVID pandemic, and this is to be exploited. And uh, number four is uh, the uh, Greek academic diaspora, which is a treasure for us. 
Thank you. Um, Professor Buradonis, please. Thank you very much, Stefanos. Thanks also go to my co well, co uh, 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 my colleagues here. Uh, just a minute from the very beginning to say that uh, internationalization has become a strategic priority for all Greek universities. But uh, unfortunately, and uh, despite all the efforts which we have made as universities and uh, with the support of the Ministry of Culture, um, I think that uh, the Greek universities lag in the area of internationalization. And in a way which is at odds with uh, the level of the academic staff and the expectations which uh, uh, our society places on education. So we need actually to attract uh, international students, uh, faculty members from abroad, to send our students abroad, to forge partnerships with uh, 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 other academic institutions. Uh, uh, in, uh, as I said uh, before, uh, other different modalities like joint or dual degrees, uh, summer schools, uh, joint uh, doctoral supervision, and the like. But uh, I think that, uh, I mean, from the be very beginning, I should make a, a point. Uh, this is uh, that, uh, for me, I, I, internationalization is not an end in itself and it should not be regarded as such by the universities. And I, because I think that what it really matters is not the number of partners which we establish with uh, other universities, but it's the quality of the synergies which we are seeking for. What I mean is that uh, I think that the Greek universities uh, should choose to partner with the universities of similar or better standing, because I think that in that way the Greek universities can be helped and upgrade their research activities and their education capabilities. Otherwise, I think that uh, internationalization uh, will lose its very essence uh, and its relevance. So in that context, I think that uh, the Hellenic Authority for uh, higher education, known uh, as a thigh in Greek, can, uh, can be very helpful in that regard. I think that it can motivate uh, the Greek universities to go, to choose this path. And uh, they can do so, I mean, the authority can do so, if in its annual uh, uh, assessment uh, of the performance of the universities, award more the universities which uh, choose to go with the universities of high profile. Uh, and I think that this is, would be a great motivation <coughs> for all the Greek universities. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Ms. Aneto. Thank you to Delphi Forum for bringing us together with this distinguished panel and delighted to represent an institution, Fulbright Foundation, that internationalization is in the core of its mission. Internationalization of higher education is a journey and requires a strategic, comprehensive, long-term plan, which influences all areas of the university, and it needs to be embraced by administration, faculty, students. It's a holistic approach. Universities, like governments, need a foreign policy to implement effectively. They also need secretaries of state. So essentially, the university needs to have the equipment to be able to proceed in that direction. We're talking about new, a new era in Greece in internationalization. Recent developments are very encouraging, an adjustment in the legal framework, public funds, cultivation of strategic partnerships. The door is open but a lot needs to be done. Ambassador Tsunis earlier mentioned about the strategic meeting last November, Faro's 22 summit, where it was a historic indeed occasion where representatives of more than 30 universities from the United States were invited to come to Greece to basically travel throughout the country and forge partnerships. However, 
collaboration between the US and Greece is not a new phenomenon. The organization I represent, the Fulbright Foundation, since 1948 has been supporting educational and cultural uh, exchanges and student and scholar mobility. And a lot of partnerships have been forged with most of the, I would say with actually with all the Greek public universities and a number of departments sort of like credit their being to Fulbright's um, first support. What is very important to note and it was mentioned earlier, is that Greece is a very desirable educational destination. It is among the top destinations of US students and it ranks ninth. We mentioned that before the pandemic, 2018, 2019, there were in one single year about 6,000 students in Greece. But how did these people get here? Yes, there are a number of US institutions that have like their own autonomous programs that bring them to Greece, but we need to focus back in assets that we have in this country, and without wanting to miss and exclude anyone, I want to refer to some of the historic institutions, the US, so like affiliated historic institutions, like the American School of Classical Studies, Anatolia College, the American College of Greece, Athens College, and the celebrated uh, college here in Athens that we've heard lots about it. And I would say that a number of these students that come through the short-term uh, study abroad programs are planting the seeds for these students to return. I'm pleased to see that a number of these students have either returned back on a Fulbright, and some of them now are enrolling in English-speaking uh, master's programs in Greek universities. There is a lot that needs to be done, and I think that it really depends on each university to see which will be the steps forward. Thank you. Great. We'll have lots of time Great. to debate. Thank you. And uh, uh, Mr. Asael, please. First of all, I'd like to deeply thank you for having me in this panel of esteemed speakers uh, to act in my capacity as a uh, Greek student that has spent a decade abroad. I've studied at the uh, University of Oxford, where I did my master's and my PhD. I've also studied at Imperial College London. But I'm a proud Greek graduate as well. So I want to start by um, one of my favorite talks. It's from uh, Richard Humming, the famous mathematician, and it's called You in Your Research. And I feel it's very topical today, despite being back in the 90s. In that talk, uh, Professor Humming could say that, like, work with your door open, and everybody will come talk to you and collaborate with you, and you'll have an open mind. While people that work with their door closed, uh, soon they won't even know what to work on. So, despite being good at maths, I cannot prove to you that the open door will result to an open mind, neither that an open mind will result to an open door. But looking today at the micro scale, that door is internationalization. However, opening that door presents many, many obstacles that have been there for many, many years uh, since the ancient times of humanity. And first of all, language, that's a huge issue. But let's see the problem uh, from a closer look. So I feel that internationalization of uh, Greek higher education is a multifaceted uh, process that uh, encompasses two main components. The first one is the component of teaching. And to that one, we need more English speaking degrees as we're already seeing beautiful efforts happening there. Within that, there's the challenge of integration. How we integrate these foreign students that have come to our country to interact and share their experiences because there's a beauty in combining things. The second component, which is crucial for a university to maintain its high quality as Greek institutions uh, do, is the component of research. And to that one, international, we need more international research collaborations, maybe visiting researchers like we're uh, seeing, and more industry collaborations. And I have to say that we're lucky because any step we do into these two components, it's just positive transformation. Now, I like to see it exactly as a journey, but uh, maybe not as a single journey. I like to see it as many, many steps together, as it's an iterative process that I feel we'll have to often readjust if we want to maintain success. And to do that, and to make sure we will always work at, walk at the right path, I feel it's very important to define good metrics of what we actually consider success through such conversations. 
Great. Thank you very much. Um, I think we've heard a lot of very interesting um, statements from, from everyone. Um, I'd like to immediately jump into the question of, well, okay, internationalization is great, but there are so many different ways to do it. There are so many different partners. And I'd like to start with uh, the, the comment that Mr. Uh, Budovic made that we should start with our natural family being the EU, the European Union. So coming back, back to you, uh, Mr. Director General, what, could you tell us a little bit more um, about some of Erasmus, if you'd like to elaborate a little bit more on that, but I think a lot, we already know a lot about it, but the European Union is doing a lot of exciting things um, when it comes to promoting uh, internationalization of higher education, primarily through the European Universities Initiative, which I think maybe it's something that a lot of people still uh, aren't quite as familiar with. So could you tell us a little bit what makes this initiative unique? Mm -hmm. Well, to start with, um Erasmus is a 35-year-old program, and it has uh, become, in the meantime, probably one of the most uh, known brand names in the world. I think that there, there's no country where you will go and you will not find uh, somebody who says, I've been on an Erasmus. And, uh, and uh, the second thing they tell you is, it has changed my life. Uh, now, uh, Europe has been building on this for 35 years. <coughs> And coming back to what I said at the start about the uh, awakening, about becoming aware of the fact that we have to, we cannot afford not to invest in quality education. And there I, I uh, also agree with, uh, with the uh, rector's comments uh, about uh, education uh, being important to, to be a, a high quality one. Uh, we are trying to create uh, what we call a European uh, education area. Europe being 27 uh, member states that has 27 different systems of education and even more in fact because the countries that, that have a regional uh, federal uh, um, structure, they, they have education at their uh, regional level, so it's 27 plus plus plus. Uh, it becomes quite complicated to, to uh, cross borders even uh, within Europe, let alone go outside. So uh, uh, Erasmus is the tool with which we are bridging these, these gaps. We are, we are uh, pushing uh, these barriers away uh, inside Europe and between uh, the EU and the rest of the world. We have, uh, we, we have sent 13 million uh, people uh, to an Erasmus scholarship and in a way uh, we, we want to believe that these are 13 million passports that, that these people have in their hand and they can use everywhere. Uh, coming to uh, the furthest, the, the steps uh, beyond this, we, we have realized that uh, first you, you were uh, sending students from France to, to Germany, then you started sending students from uh, Italy outside Europe. Now you need to bring the universities of Europe together to create uh, bigger universities that will have uh, not only uh, a much stronger academic and research capacity inside Europe, but also that we'll be able to compete on, on world stage. So what we call the European Universities is a, is a project of unprecedented strategic partnerships between larger groups of universities. There can be eight, nine, ten uh, universities in, in one alliance that are not just coming together to exchange students in a mobility program, but they are actually creating joint uh, pedagogical programs uh, and the plan is that uh, long term they will even uh, agree on issuing uh, joint degrees or even a one unique degree. Uh, this is a big, a big step forward. If you think that, uh, that the Bologna process, uh, for those who are aware, uh, familiar with it, is now 25 years old and we still have barriers uh, inside Europe to recognize each other's uh, degree. And now a lot of rectors that participate in these European University Alliances are telling me that what Bologna didn't do in 25 years, we are doing in two and a half years. Uh, it's quite an, quite an achievement. Now these alliances are for the moment, uh, we have 44 such groups. They, uh, they uh, are encompass 340 universities. The ambition is, by 24 to have 60 alliances and to come to 500 universities uh, more or less. Why 500? It's a target we set ourselves because Europe has 5,000 uh, 
uh, universities uh, officially. So we thought that if we reach 10%, we have a sort of uh, minimum uh, um, possibility to uh, drive change through through this, this work. Okay. Um, Mr. Budovics, how, how do you see this vision for the European Universities Initiative fit with the strategic priorities that are needed, that Greek universities need in terms of their internationalization right now, both in terms of, you mentioned Europe being the, the main area, but also in terms of the ways in which uh, universities do their internationalization? Well, picking on uh, the, um, the um, uh, what uh, the um, uh, Director General just said on uh, the vision uh, regarding a European university, I think it's uh, too early to say that this is uh, moving in the right direction. Uh, my institution and other Greek uh, institutions are trying to be part of this uh, uh, very ambitious endeavor. And uh, for the time being, uh, we are facing two major problems. Mm -hmm. One is bureaucracy and the other is funding. And uh, regarding uh, both of them, uh, what is most important is to get the universities believe in this, uh, in this direction and to get our people, faculty, students, everybody, uh, moving along in, uh, in, in, in that direction. Uh, I mentioned in my introductory statement that we are facing here in Greece, because let's be pragmatic, uh, the uh, barrier of the language. Uh, mm -hmm. This is something which uh, requires some revolution in order to uh, adjust to, uh, to the standards of the rest of the European countries and serve the purpose of quality, the purpose of, the purpose of integration. And in that direction, we need to take some uh, certain, certain measures. Uh, I will uh, share with you very shortly a uh, very recent experience with Erasmus students who are in uh, NTUA. I invited five of them just to have a very meaningful and, uh, uh, discussion on all the aspects. Uh, guys from uh, Germany, from Spain, uh, from Turkey, and uh, also from uh, uh, a lady from a Chinese, of Chinese origin from a uh, Greek university. Uh, two things that they were facing. One is bureaucracy. They couldn't get uh, their money on time while they are studying here. The other is the language barrier. Uh, they work in isolation from the rest of the Greek students. Uh, of course, they recognize that uh, they are getting a lot of uh, help from the instructors, from the professors. Uh, working in the laboratories is, uh, is better because they m make groups with uh, some uh, small groups with other students and everybody uh, mm -hmm. tries to be uh, helpful and English is the prevailing language. But uh, regarding uh, their education in Greece, they are doing that on a private basis. Right. Um, and speaking of this common language, uh, being fundamental, and obviously that language is obviously English. Uh, I'd like to, to go to Muzanetu, who referred to, you know, that a lot has been done in the past three years, but that there's still a lot of work. Wh where, which key areas do you see um, being most, most important for the Greek-US uh, collaboration to really flourish and, and continue on the great work that has been uh, achieved uh, over so many decades? Thank you for uh, oh, Sorry, for Muzanetu, yes. Okay. Remember, like the history, as uh, Rector Kundori um, mentioned before, in order for us to be celebrating what we're celebrating today and to meet the Paris summit uh, last November, it has required decades for more than 100 years of different institutions being involved in sort of like attracting. I'm speaking, of course, between the US uh, Greece uh, experience and the strength of these bilateral relations and uh, the fact that the US Greece strategic dialogue has placed uh, education on, to on the top of its agenda, which is essential. I want to circle back briefly about the Erasmus. Uh, it's a wonderful program. Uh, it's worldwide now, and like Fulbright, it operates in about 180 countries, but sometimes Erasmus students feel lonely. And they feel lonely because of the language barrier many times, because they cannot have the classroom integration. And it really relies on the strength and the willingness of the individual instructor and faculty to be able to engage them. So they're missing part of the experience. 
And I think a synergy, honestly, between Greek public institutions with uh, some organizations in Greece that bring uh, foreign students, not necessarily US students, could benefit because they have the equipment of sort of like being student focused. They have excellent faculty as well as Greek universities do, but the student, the hospitality part, which you know, certainly we're talking about quality, but when you go to a new place, you want to be able to find things easily. Earlier on, we addressed the issue of housing. That's important. Also, planning ahead. I find that sometimes we have a number of scholars that have a difficulty, uh, although they want to come, because they do not know what exactly uh, will be taught, which semester, etc. So the curriculum is also incredibly important. And as I said, like governments, universities like governments need a foreign policy. And this is a long-term mm -hmm. project. Um, before I give the, uh, the floor to, to Mr. Asael, who's been, who is the youngest person on this panel who was recently a student and an international student, so I would like to hear more from his perspective. Uh, Mr. Rector, you wanted to yeah. jump in on that question. I mean, uh, just to respond to your, uh, to your question, uh, first of all, it's, uh, I mean, I would like to point uh, on which uh, strategic directions I think that uh, yes. our, our internationalization efforts uh, should go. I think that here uh, there are two factors which uh, we should take into consideration. The first is that who, uh, the ties with the U.S. Uh, and the rest uh, of uh, the English-speaking world uh, have been running uh, for many years now. Uh, and this is the one thing. And the other thing is that uh, uh, several universities, including, for instance, uh, the National Technical University and uh, uh, the Athens University of Economics uh, uh, have over 50% uh, 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 of uh, uh, the academic staff uh, have obtained a PhD from the United States or from uh, a Western uh, Europe institution, academic institution. So I think that this is a background which, uh, from which we should depart in order to approach first the USA and uh, the Western Europe institutions, as uh, uh, Professor Budovic suggested, and then other universities across the world. The other thing is that, uh, which uh, I think that we should uh, look at, is that we should engage in one or in the other way uh, Greek and non-Greek uh, distinguished uh, uh, academics from abroad. Uh, we can do that in multiple ways. One way is uh, uh, to have a type of uh, Fulbright program which uh, will, uh, uh, will make it easy for them to spend uh, at least one semester in Greece. The other way, which has not yet explored, and it's something which uh, we think that will put uh, uh, in the Athens University of Economics into motion is that uh, we'll, uh, we invite academics, no matter whether they are Greeks or not, uh, from abroad, uh, to participate in our external advisory boards. The boards, the external advisory boards are boards uh, which uh, have the duty to renew and to review every year uh, our programs, undergraduate and postgraduate, and then to make recommendations uh, concerning the adjustment of the programs uh, to the needs which will emerge uh, because of the progress in science or because of the needs of the market. So I think that there are many ways uh, through which we can engage uh, uh, these scientists from uh, uh, all over the world. I mean, very di distinctly, very distinguished uh, uh, colleagues. And I think that uh, this will make good to the university because they will have a very good sense of participation. And then, I mean, the bonds uh, between our university and the university they present will uh, come, uh, I think, uh, in their own way, uh, very close. Okay. So uh, what I would like also mm -hmm. just to, to tell is that uh, we should uh, also look at the internal strategic uh, governance of the universities. Uh, I think that uh, 
as, in terms of the administration, I think that we should give an exclusive du duty to one of the vice rectors to deal uh, solely with uh, issues of internationalization. And uh, we have done so at the university, and some other universities also uh, have resorted to this practice, which I think is very, very useful. And at the same time, as we have one in the administration who deals, then we should have a, a, a department within our administrative services which will deal both with all the necessities required uh, for the international organization efforts, for instance, the housing of, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for uh, international students, uh, the online marketing, the social ma market marketing, and so on and so forth. So at the same time, I think that the Ministry of Education should establish its own department which will deal exclusively with these issues. Because if we will do so, I think then we can coordinate the, our efforts, and, and I think this uh, will bring uh, internationalization uh, very close and uh, uh, not to be remote as it is today. Thank Great. you. Uh, it seems, Ms. Zanetti, for a very quick remark. Very brief. Yeah. You mentioned about attracting foreign academics on Greek university boards. I think this was kind of like somehow implemented a few years ago. I do not know exactly how it went. Then diasporic Greeks, which we have amazing uh, Greek professors, uh, professors of Greek origin and uh, sort of like graduates of Greek universities in universities across the world. There's no question about the quality also of Greek education. There was a program that over the course of three years, supported by the Stavros Niarchos Foundation and implemented through the Institute of International Education and Fulbright, that brought about 200 diasporic Greeks to work and collaborate with Greek un public universities. And the idea was to open these little doors. So there are tools, and it's important to remember uh, these tools, and then, talking about so like establishing an office that can deal with internationalization. It's wonderful that we have the study in Greece portal because mm -hmm. up until a few years ago, it was an arduous task to find out in one place where a foreign student could go in Greece. So we played that role also by saying education destination Greece and we try to sort of like bring together information from public state universities. So it's a wonderful new direction. Otherwise, they would come through the short-term study programs, which are excellent, but if we want to bring students also in public state universities, we need to sort of like make it easy. Great, and, and, and on that point, I think it's, it's important to remember, um, as the Minister Kiramar said earlier today, that um, for the first time, study in Greece has become an official institution, a, a company that is effectively owned and run by all 24 of the Greek universities, which is a major step forward, as uh, Rector Buradonis was saying, in unifying, uh, you know, unifying our strength and, and coming out stronger as a as a brand product uh, for education in Greece. But because exactly that brand product is trying to attract a lot of international students and primarily at the um, you know at the BA level, I want to come back uh, to to you, Mr. Rasael, and 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 hear from your experience um, as an international student what actually worked for you um, in order to feel that integration. Um, what didn't? What can universities in Greece do from your experience in order to attract students effectively? Um, that's a very nice question. So at that time there were definitely many, I studied at the University of Macedonia, and at that time there were definitely uh, uh, exchange programs like uh, Erasmus and ISAC. And it was beautiful because you would see the students that came back, you could spot them, they had a different mindset. So I think that like there was so much beauty into that that like I pursued trying to go to a summer school and with a little bit of effort, uh, like we managed, we managed to do that. However, looking back at that time, I didn't know very important things. Like I had no clue what an internship was, and I can't remember any uh, invited talks by foreign uh, professors. And I don't mean just necessarily the Greek diaspora. I mean uh, uh, just new ideas coming back. Um, now, maybe some thoughts on what did work at Oxford. I feel we had support uh, at multiple levels, but the most important part was vision. 
Like, for example, during my second year of uh, PhD, uh, we did a groundbreaking uh, uh, innovation on speech recognition. Immediately, our supervisor said, uh, like, if you ever want to do a startup, now it's the time. And that actually led me into my future paths. But there was a mechanism to support that. So the things that I really liked were maybe, um, I, I would summarize them into three things. The first one that worked really well was that like everybody at the university was selected and respected the institution and was proud to be there. That's something we really need to build on that. At the same time, everybody was welcome and, and uh, it really felt like that. The second line of support was that there were mentors and, uh, and old hands that they would guide you through every, diff uh, through every step because it's a process of something new when you go to a new country. And we had support that like was, I, I really want to say nearly 24 seven. The third one, and what I enjoyed the most, and this may sound weird, but it was lunch. Like you've been to Oxford as well. And my favorite thing was lunch. And not because as a Greek, I love food. But we had those huge tables that we would all sit together and you would, exactly. And you would all sit together and you would discuss from nuclear physics that I had no clue to ancient history, which because of that reason, I end up working today applying artificial intelligence to ancient history. And of course, somebody could say, but here we have lunch too at our university. And I'll say that that's absolutely right. But the structure of it, made it all different. Like I would always interact with somebody new and I would learn something. And this interdisciplinary interaction, I think it's key. So what I want to say with this is that maybe sometimes it's not just the big ideas that make the difference, but maybe sometimes we should also focus on the smart ideas that we can make small changes. Yeah, mm -hmm. what, what I fully agree. It's a, it's a great point. Lunches uh, in Oxford are indeed the best part of the university. Um, <laughs> um, not we food. are over time, but uh, our organizers have graciously extended us another five minutes. Uh, and so I'd like to open it uh, to the audience. Uh, and, uh, and to open it to, to the audience, and we'll get one final last yeah. statement. So um, let's take uh, one or two questions from the audience. Yes? Uh, thank you all for very enlightening remarks. I am also a student in Athens uh, Law School, Un University of Athens Law School. I wanted to ask you, like, recently in a TV interview, the Prime Minister said that he wanted to amend the Constitution to allow for private universities to open in Greece, to exist in Greece. Um, this is to all of you. How do you think this will affect the internationalization of Greek education? Will it be good? Will it be bad? Will it not affect it in a significant way? What do you think? Okay, and let's, let's take, let's reply um, to, the, to this question and also give uh, you know, a very short summary because we are over time, so. If there's anything well, else you'd uh, like to Let me just uh, comment on this question, and I try to provide a short answer. Our purpose here is to strengthen the internationalization of the public uh, Greek universities. Of course, uh, changing constitution will, might m move things in a different, maybe positive direction, but now our theme is how to strengthen this particular uh, issue. And uh, with regard to that, I want just to mention a couple of things which I will combine with my closing statement. Uh, that uh, re please realize that in Greece now, in Greek public universities, uh, we don't have practically foreign PhD students. Uh, we don't see any Chinese students in the campus. We don't have uh, foreign faculty on a permanent stage. Of course, this is a different story and this has to do with the constitution. Um, uh, some other things regarding the capacity of the internationalization and the mobility of the students uh, regarding the American front, the capacity is very, very, very limited in contrast to what's happening in the European uh, uh, area. Because, uh, for example, NDUA has uh, uh, signed a very groundbreaking agreement with uh, Columbia University for a dual degree at the other graduate level. To get a student to Columbia to study there and get a degree for one year requires $80,000 if uh, for tuition fees and living expenses. That's not the case for an American student coming here. And also, uh, if we go to, if we send a student to a European university, things are totally different. Well, these are aspects which are very crucial to deal with, and I don't think that the 
solution to this particular problem is the Article 16 mm -hmm. of the uh, Constitution. Uh, Professor Buradonis. Yes, I think that uh, uh, I think that this the issue about Article 16 was uh, discussed in the previous panel. But uh, 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 anyway, I, I think that one of the major problems for uh, the Greek universities is uh, uh, what happened that we had the absorption uh, by the universities of the former technological uh, institutions. And I think that this, for the time being, has uh, uh, bring, uh, has, broken, uh, has brought about a, a two speeds in our efforts uh, to go international. Because all these technological institutions should, after, I think, a decade, will be adapted to the other ones which exist, I mean, the traditional uh, Greek universities, public universities, and then they can become competitive in the international arena. This is one of our major problems. And the other problem is just if I can, uh, not all the universities have campus. The National Technical University has its own campus. And the Athens University does. Uh, and one of the crucial problems is the facilities which will offer to our students, to the, to the international students. For instance, uh, the housing of uh, international students. Because I think that uh, to let them uh, go free and choose their housing uh, will be a, a suboptimum option and life with uncertainty. What I think we should do in the near future is to start uh, to develop our expertise on this field and the others in order to give the necessary services to the international students which they are accustomed to those uh, uh, services uh, in their own institutions. Okay, so. and w let's get uh, one quick, very quick remark from all of our speakers. Um, okay. Ms. Aneto, please. Yanis mentioned the interdisciplinarity, which I think is alpha omega in a school curriculum, in the university curriculum, rather. And I think that's important. And it's wonderful to see that this is changing. And also recently, I mean, like two years ago, I think it was, we're talking about the Greek Erasmus, which will allow so like mobility mm -hmm. within departments and within the country. That's also very important. And, Are you optimistic uh, about that? <laughs> Are you optimistic about I'm that? I'm an optimist. We practical we practical purposes <laughs> for this particular one. It requires work and it requires the infrastructure. So whatever we're discussing here today can be great theory. Right now, we have some open doors. We need to get, roll our sleeves, and sort of like strategize on how we move forward. And giving you a piece of good news, you said you would like to see more PhD students in Greek universities. Recently, the State Scholarship Foundation and Fulbright signed an agreement, a five-year agreement, that will bring, uh, will give the opportunity to Greek PhD candidates to go for six months in the US and to US PhD candidates to come in Greek state universities. This will open doors. We're not sort of like encouraging the brain drain, but rather brain circulation. Great. So, I'm sorry. So I'm great. being I'm being given some very mean looks. Um, so, uh, let's uh, let's wrap up. Yes, please. I'll be very brief. Yeah. Um, I want to pinpoint. I was having this beautiful discussion at the day before I graduated from Oxford uh, with a diplomat friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And what we pinpointed, we were trying to find out what was the difference that it made compared to our prior studies. And what we pinpointed was that like, it wasn't about the knowledge that you get. It's about, it was about the feeling that you can pretty much do anything. And that was beautiful. And I think that's very, very important. Uh, and that is achieved through pride for the institution. And I'm very optimistic for that because as Greeks, we are very, very proud of our country. So I know that in the short term, it may be difficult to achieve that and be proud for all of our universities, but I won't say that we're here for the long run. Great. Resourceful and resilient. And exactly. let's come to full circle to <laughs> Madam Director General. Thank you, Stefane. Uh, this is a start of a fascinating discussion, but since we have to close, I will not put new items on the table. I'll try to address a couple of remarks. 
uh, misdirector uh, ratio funding. Uh, well, there's uh, a lot of countries are using additional other funds in order to support students that have difficulties with funding. The, for example, the social fund, the French, the Germans, uh, the Scandinavians, they use it as a top up to support students that, that have uh, an issue uh, with funding. Uh, on housing, uh, you, you, several of you raised it. Uh, also, I know that the structural funds can help address this, and I know that uh, the ministry uh, in, in Athens uh, has the means to, to provide answers to this, so maybe one needs to look at it. The RRF, the instrument that was created for the, to deal with the pandemic, also foresees funding for this kind of thing. Um, on, uh, on the European universities, just to close that circle, there are, uh, out of the 340, there are eight Greek universities that are already participating. Uh, I'm very uh, happy about that. Uh, amongst other things, because I am myself a product of the Greek higher education, and I'm a proud product and a grateful product of the Greek higher education. So uh, I hope that more of you will participate. Uh, it's a pilot, but it's already a paradigm shift. It, uh, it, uh, the, the 340 institutions that participate are very enthusiastic. It's, it's contagious, their enthusiasm, and we can build on it all together. Thank you. Great, and on that note, despite all the challenges ahead, I think we should note on that note of uh, enthusiasm and positivity. So I please uh, would like to welcome you all to uh, thank our panelists for today.